part of what was exciting about this was being out in Santa Fe with those animals, with those people, with the, that weather, those elements. It reminds me a lot of, of, of the stories of John Ford when they'd go to Monument Valley. Right. They would live in very, you know, not unlike the way that the characters that they're depicting live. But, but, but Ron had to do the Oklahoma land rush. <laughs> yeah, that and, and that hadn't been done uh, since Cimarron. And you remember, remember that movie? <laughs> the, uh, when we were shooting that scene, it was, uh, you know, it was kind of the, the, the reason that the, the story evolved was because that I'd been visiting my, one of my, my great-grandparents uh, in, in, uh, in Kansas. And my great-grandmother took out this yellowed newspaper article, mm -hmm. and it was this blurry photograph of all the horses leaving the starting line, mm -hmm. and she said, that was your great-grandfather. Really? And my dad later said, that was not him. <laughs> and then she's decided it's him, but that was not him. But I, I, I did a little poking around and found out that I had actually three relatives yes. who had been in that race. Kind of comically, nobody ever got any land, but nobody so died then, trying, and they all had these wacky sort of adventures. But the moment we were actually filming it, yeah. we had so many historical... Um, uh, you know, recreators who yes. participated in this thing. We had yeah. a whole sort of 700 of them who were camped out, and it was uh -huh. its own wild environment uh -huh. over there. But here they came, and because we had 13 cameras, no vehicles could be around. So we had a helicopter, yeah. and so all these, these horses and these people on foot and these wagons just started lining up. And I was there, you know, an hour and a half before sunrise was going to be, set, helping to set the shots mm -hmm. and making sure. And I was on a, on a crane. And I was sitting there watching this thing, and everybody, everything was perfect. And I just felt like this is as close as a human being can be to actually ex having a time travel experience. Yes. Because my relatives were standing around in wow. anticipation on a line like this 100 years ago. And so it was, a, it was one of those times when movies really right. offers you a real, a, you know, an utterly unique experience. Yeah, and, and, and those times are uh, soon to be long forgotten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, it's, it's very hard today now to muster the troops and do the David Lean epic, sure. you, know, you, know, you know, landscape shots yeah. because, yeah. You, know, you know, today you, yes. you know that somehow as, as authentic as the shots look in any of our movies, when you've got 100,000 characters running around the screen, whether it's the Lord of the Rings or the, sure. the Hobbit movie, right. you just somehow know no longer in the back of your mind that there is something a little bit um, create, c creative about, about the shot, right. and yet, yet if the story is working really well, you forgive yes. and you actually, you, you actually thank the filmmakers for giving you so much eye candy, yeah. yes. and, you stop, and you sort of stop questioning how they did it, if the story's yeah. working. If the story doesn't work, all you do is question <laughs> the shot.